Hello, everyone. My name is Kiana and Joseph. He is my co-host or just another host. And welcome to NYC's Open Data 101 class. And it's hosted by Beta NYC and we're the fellows. So the purpose we're actually going to have here, the reason why we're doing this is to demystify and encourage the use of NYC Open Data. And this is a very exciting day because by the end of this, you'll be students of the city and possibly the country's first open data class. Not first, but first with us. As I mentioned, I am Kiana. I am from John Jay, actually, and I am a civics fellow from Beta NYC. Joseph? My name is Joseph. I'm one of the innovation fellows, and I'm also a student at New York City College of Technology, a major in data science. And now we'd love to meet you guys in the room. I'll, I'll introduce myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily. I get to work with these wonderful fellows who are delivering this uh, training today. So I work with Beta NYC and the Civic Innovation Fellowship Program. And if you need to reach me about anything, you can do so at emily at beta.nyc. Hi, everyone. I'm Zachary Fader from the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, and we work to with a bunch of different city staff to maintain and publish the information that's on near to the open data. And you're fortunate enough to be collaborating with Beta NYC on this class. And if you ever have any questions about open data, among the many resources you'll hear about today, you could also send a message to the city's open data help desk. And either a member of our team, a member of the city's um, information technology agency, or some city staff member will respond to you with an answer. It's so great to meet all of you, but now we're actually going to move on to start talking about what Beta NYC does and a little bit of history. So I'm going to pass it over to my co-host. Okay. Now we'll tell you a bit about our, our organization, Beta NYC. Beta NYC is a civic organization dedicated to improve the lives of New Yorkers through civic engagement, open data, technology, and design. In, 2000, in 2008, we began as a meetup, and now we have over 5,000 members. At our website, uh, NYC, we have classes on a data portal, data insights, events, a Facebook group, monthly, a monthly newsletter, reports, and YouTube videos. Beta NYC has been on a civic a journey of civic technology and communal, communal organizing in NYC. We started out as a meetup, people to talk about open data and uh, open government. In, 2000, in 2012, Beta NYC helped usher in the open data law. In 2000, 2013, we wrote the people roadmap to a digital NYC, helping provide several laws. In, 2014, the Manhattan World President Office started the Civic Innovation Fellowship Program. And in 2015, uh, Beta NYC was invited to run the Civic Innovation Fellowship. In 2016, we created Forstat, one of the tools that we'll show you later. In 2017, uh, we created tools like Boundaries Map, SLAM, which maps uh, liquor licenses and restaurant complaints, Tennis Map, AHV Dashboard, AHV stands for After Hours Variance, and other, other tools. In 2018, we created RADAR, which stands for Research and Data Anal and System Request. In 2019, we did a demographic analysis of community boards. In 2020, we did a virtual fellowship, of which this year we're doing round two. So what do we do? We have ma three main uh, buckets of work. One, our talent and career pipeline, where our civic innovation fellowship exposes CUNY students to employment as public servants. We equip them with digital era analytics skills and give them an inside view of the government. Also research and tools where our human center research provides in-depth assessment and of local needs. We provide digital tools and promote agile processes that make it easier for government workers to do, to do their jobs. And last one is public engagement. Yeah. Our trainings, public events, and programs provide physical space for demystifying civic infrastructure and digital expertise and directly supporting emerging needs in uh, digital civic society. So our one, part of the goal is to help the people connect and empower themselves to make the city safer, more efficient, resilient, and smarter. We want all New Yorkers to be connected to 21st century opportunities. So now we're going to talk about NYC's government, history, and open data, uh, how these subjects actually come together. This is a really big thing when we're talking about NYC data and how it actually affects us. Thanks, Emily. So about 1.3 million people in New York City actually live near poverty, and 1.1 million kids in the New York City uh, school system. Now, if that was a city, it'd be the 10th largest city in America. And close to half a million people living in public housing, that's the city of Atlanta. 70, sorry, 700,000 people come in and out of Grand Central Station, and that's more than the city of Boston coming out in and out of that one train station, which is ridiculous. 
And lastly, just a little bit more brief info, there is about 18,000 miles of pavement and sidewalk. You can literally walk from Hawaii, come back, go back, and then walk across the Pacific and end up in San Francisco. As you can see, there's a lot of information and a lot of things in New York City compared to other places that makes us one of the biggest cities in America. So as you can see, we have a 90 plus million, sorry, billion dollar budget, and we have 65 million tourists annually. So with that, we must have a lot and a lot of departments to help us punctuate with all that. But we, more specifically, I want to talk about our uh, community boards. So in New York City, we have about 59 community boards. And with those community boards, you have other departments like the public advocate, the comptroller, the borough president's office, and the district attorney. As you can see, we have a whole, we have a bunch of departments like the borough president's comptroller, like I said. We also have the mayor, the city council, the district attorney, and they all kind of work with the people of New York. And the mayor works with 50 plus agencies to help the people of New York. This is a NYC boundaries map. We will also link all resources at the end. And as you can see, New York City is broken into many different administrative and political boundaries, as the map illustrates. Each agency, a council district, community board, and borough has different geographic purview, previews. And it's helpful to know who represents your area, your immediate area. And I'm just going to link this, the boundaries, in the chat. You can check it out on your own time or now. But this is a tool that Beta NYC made, actually, to help uh, see about community districts and community boards, how they match up. Also, you might hear me say community board or community district. They mean the same thing. As you can see, the black line is the uh, community district, I believe, and the orange line is the community. Wherever we are in NYC, regardless of borough, these are people who might represent you. So look for your borough president, your district attorney, the state senator we all have, and your community board, which is incredibly important because you can actually find a placement position for you right on your community board that can help. Next slide. So we're going to go into a little bit of a lengthy process here explaining about open data legislation and how it connects with it. So in 2010, uh, the Manhattan Borough President Gail Buer introduced the country's first medicinal open data law in 2010. She did this as she was a city council member. This legislation is actually made up of several interlocking laws that give it its weight. In other cities, open data is a technical policy or an executive order. But in New York City, it's the law. Now we're going to 2012. In March 7th of 2012, former Mayor Bloomberg signed a local law 11 of 2012. This is more commonly known as the open data law, which is amended to uh, NYC's administrative code to mandate all public data that be made available in one single web port. Now, in 2015, in November of 2015, January 2016, and in December of 2017, Mayor de Blasio approved several amendments for the open data law. These laws include stronger requirements on uh, data dictionaries and data retention, so most people can understand what they're actually looking at instead of having all these terms being thrown at them. It also gives a response timeline for public requests and the extension of the data, the open data mandate to perpetuality, which helps, which is easier for New Yorkers to access. The open data team, which consists of the mayor's office of data analytics, MODA, and the Department of Information, Technology, and Telecommunication, is responsible for carrying out multiple laws, which include the open data law, them extending the public the data publishing, which is actually the local law 2251 uh, of 2017, retention and archiving, data dictionary, geospatial standards, and public requests, and a bunch of other things. Next slide, please. NYC's open data program is actually a joint program that includes the mayor of data analytics and the Department of Information, Technology, and Telecommunications. They work together in a network with about 100 open data coordinators staff, city agencies, offices, and commissions who are responsible for identifying, structuring, documenting, and sharing NYC's open data. As a result of the work of these open data coordinators, more than 3,000 different databases, including 300 published in last year, are open and available for anyone in New York City or outside. 
that's more than 1.5 million people visiting NYC Open Data in 2020, which is amazing. And hopefully we get more as you all are learning about it. Next slide, please. So this law is actually a really big deal for us. And it's also a big deal for cities like Las Vegas, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. So every year, as you can see with our birthday hats, we celebrate it like a little birthday. And the NYC School of Data is actually a community that works with us. And it's a driven conference with a focus on open data, civic technology, and design conference. Ultimately, we empower attendants to improve their lives in neighborhoods through workshops like this, panels, demos, and networking. So we just threw a lot of government history at you. Hope you're not overwhelmed and still hanging on. Uh, but you're probably wondering what all this has to do with open data. This is all history and backstory. Open data mostly refers to government data, and it's actually meant to make the government more transparent and accountable to the public. Because as we know, the government can be a little sneaky. Unless you work for the government, then you guys are very transparent. So we're going to be using 311. In 2021, we actually had 25 million service requests. And in Community Board 4, which is one of the community boards I'm working with, there was about 4,726 complaints made this year so far. This 311 is the people's data set, and it's open 24-7, 365 days a year. It's available in over 175 languages and it's accessible through phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and even it has an app. Next slide, please. Now, 311 is an incredible tool, but it can be really hard to understand and filter and analyze this data. So we created a platform that takes all the data from 311 and categorizes it to a database that can be easily accessible for the general public. And we're going to use community boards for this. So I'm just going to pass this off to Joseph, and he's going to introduce you to Forestat. Okay, so Forestat is a 301 dashboard customized for each uh, community, uh, community board. It allows users to discover uh, issues and trends in their districts and helps to make the government more transparent and reactive. We built it in 2017 at the office of Manhattan President, uh, Gail A. Brewer. You can access it through the site, uh, type forestat.beta.nyc into your browser or just a Google board stat. Uh, this time we'll be looking into a community board in Brooklyn. So after clicking Brooklyn on the top, you can see this first page where you can filter board stat to whichever community board you're interested in. Here we set it to Brooklyn 02. And in page two, we can view by community board. We discover the top complaints, descriptors, and the addresses with the most complaints. Here the date range is set to January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. And you can see here that here that the most the top 10 complaints, the one with the most is noise residential. And this below that, uh, it has the descriptors. It says banging and pounding here. And to the right side, you can see the, that the address with the most complaints is 177 Sam Street. In page three, it shows the history of uh, complaints. You can type in an address on the, the top right, the left. And in the middle here, you can see a uh, Square pie chart. Uh, this one is uh, you can see that most of the complaints were about no uh, noise residential in at 177 Sam Street. On the right, you can see uh, a line graph. Where, yeah, that shows the number of requests by just by descriptors. You can see that the uh, at 177 Sam Street there were most complaints in 2020. And then below, you can see that just the history of complaints or requests we made in page four. You can lo locate geographic clusters, these uh, colorful circles on the map. You, by hovering your mouse over one of them, you can see this text box, which will tell you no the number of complaints, that's the address, the descriptor, and some other details. I also uh, changed the date range to March 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021 here. Geographic clusters by complaint type. I changed the complaint type here to legal parking. But within one complaint type, you can see that there are multiple descriptors. It can be, all right. Here I, on the map, I had it in yellow. There's double park blocking vehicle in gray. And the gray circles are uh, blocked hydrants. Purple are parking, post, posted parking sign violation. And light green are blocked bike lanes. You also select more than one complaint type at a time. And we end up as multiple selections here. Right, for this one, I selected 
heat and hot, heat and hot water and noise residential and noise residential but I say multiple colors there's blue which represents banging and pounding and purple which re which represents loud music and partying page five you can view number of complaints or requests sent to agencies um, I think this is average completion or days close basically the number of days it takes to for them to answer to your request and fix the problem you can see here that yeah. uh, it's the most uh, requests and for all these agencies the average date to close is around 5.29 but if you click on one of these uh, agencies you can see the number change into the average for that agency alone in page eight we can view total monthly requests for one or multiple complaint types here we have uh, non-emergency police matters or social distancing in purple non-compliance with reopening in, in Lyme if you don't know uh, Lyme it's uh, approval for reopening of businesses uh, according to safety, safety standards and in brown uh, can you guess what it is yes it oops, went too fast uh, anyways next if you go fireworks does anyone want to see the source of the, of the data it's a place where you can find so welcome to the open data platform so this tool is going to be used to analyze the open data, similar to board stat. We're excited to share this with you. And we were just exposed to it five weeks ago, but so far we've known that it is really powerful and we found a lot of information from that. It's really useful and it's almost 10 years old. So it's birthday should be coming up. So let's jump right in. Next slide. You can find open data is simply by doing a Google search, uh, NYC open data portal. It should be the first one, NYC open data, as you can see. Next one. This is the homepage for the NYC open data. And we recommend that you guys sign in so you can save your account, save your database. And also you can share with us. And maybe you find something that's really interesting that we have not thought of. So for this, we're going to type in 311 into the search bar. Like I said, we recommend signing in so you become a part of the community. Next slide again. Mm -hmm. So this is how you sign up and make your account. It asks you a couple questions, but after that, it's a really simple process. Next, please. So once you sign in, you can hit the search bar and hit 311. The first one is actually the one we're going to be working with because we're doing 2010 to present. Next. This slide, these are screenshots. However, it should be, it is up to date. But I just want to point out that it shows you day, like the date that it is updated. As you can see on the right side, the right bubble, it says it's updated frequently, like frequency, and it's daily. And at the time of February 23rd of this year, there was 442,000 views, and it's only increased from there. So to check out the data, we're going to click the view data at the top, but it's also a link to the data set dictionary which is a document that teaches you what's in the date in the document and it teaches you what the phrases that you might see that might look a little unfamiliar next please so this is what the data looks like the at the top you can see that there's filter which we'll be using shortly there's also a visualize option and an export option where you can export the data and put it into a different spreadsheet to view it in a more concise area as you can see there are 41 columns and there's about uh, 24.9 million rows. Next slide. So there's almost 500 different complaints with the 311 data, and it's all across five boroughs. That includes Staten Island, as much as people love to say it doesn't. So what are some interesting things you see here? You guys can put in the chat, just some things that you see about the complaint type. For example, you see something that says general construction that's pretty vague does that mean like construction uh, in the residential or construction for commercials you have general which is so vague because what's general is there anything interesting you guys see about how they're broken down lots of different noise types of complaints yep that's right there's about three or four noise there's noise residential, noise commercial, there's just straight noise, and then there's noise street walk and sidewalk. So these are the most top complaints that you'll usually see, especially during like the colder months, you'll see a lot about heat and hot water. So this is the community board I decided to do. I decided to do Manhattan Community Board 4. This is around where I actually go to school. So this is very interesting to see for me. So in order to filter, 
But before we do that, I want to let you guys know at the bottom, there's like the smallest circle. There, There's a number there, and that's in, in total the 311 request. So as you can see, just by filtering it to 04 Manhattan, which is a community board, and we did, we filtered it by community board, it narrowed it down for 10 plus years of 301 calls to that smaller number. So as you can see, it's incredibly detailed and with filtering. So next we're going to, thank you. So we want to be a little bit more specific and we're going to add some more data to look at a subset. So we're going to go to uh, date creator and we're going to do is after. I know you can't really see it, but you're going to hit date created and is after. And I decided to do this year, January 1st, and it's going to be like 12 a.m. And I wanted to look for specifically the agency. You're going to make another one, like another filter. And you're going to hit agency is, and I decided to do the housing preservation department. So these are all the 311 calls made in Manhattan Community Board 4 after January 1st, 2021, and they were assigned to the Department of Housing Preservation. As you can see, it's gone down again of the data set. So has everyone getting it so far? Any questions you want to add? Any comments you want to state about this? Okay. All right. Emily, I see that you unmuted. Would you like to say something? I was just going to say no, that it, it was very clear how we're narrowing down the data to something that's a little more digestible. Thank you. Okay. Again, please don't be shy. If you really don't understand something, I have no business slowing down and just going right back. So I actually want to try, I wanted to give you guys another example of how to use filters in a more specific way. So you're going to clear out all of your filters that you might have used, and we're going to go uh, right back to keeping 04 Manhattan as our community board. But this time we're going to go and look for complaints that are created between April of last year, 2020, which was the beginning of the end, in my opinion. So you're going to hit create a date as a way to filter. And then you're going to put is between to really narrow down the date. You're going to do April 1st and April 31st. And that's going to be your second filter. Your third filter is going to be, I'm sorry, I forgot what I put there, descriptor. And you're going to put is to make sure it's specifically that. And you're going to put social distancing. I have to say, when you're doing this, when you're typing in what you're going to put, do not hit space because that actually changes the layout of everything. So just for example, 04 Manhattan, don't hit space. Just hit enter. So as you can see, the database actually went down even more, and these are all the complaints. Do you see how specific it is? So can anyone tell me what agency was this actually after? What agency actually responded to this? Yes, NYPD actually took care of this, and the complaint type is actually a specific name for it. How, however, I can't really see it, <laughs> but it actually does have a section for it. I think it's not emergency something. Not quite sure the rest of it, though. So now that we have the social distancing complaint from April of 2020, which was like the height, I wanted to see and compare it to this year, January, just to see if there was like a decrease in it. But as you can see, we changed the date created from April to January to January 31st. And as you can see, there is nothing, which... Maybe that's really good. Maybe they could have changed it into a different descriptor. But I think that's just really interesting to know how in Community Board 4, there was no complaints of that. Or maybe perhaps NYPD stopped receiving those complaints and attending to them. So one more I wanted to show you guys how to use the filtering is, again, we're in Community Board 4 in Manhattan. We're going to look for a homeless person assistance since January 2020. So you're going to put date created and is after. So you're going to hit, you're going to create the date January 1st, 2020 at 12 a.m. In the descriptive type, you're going to put is and you're going to put homeless person assistance. Remember, don't put that space after it because the data set is very specific. So as you can see, there are a couple, there's a number at the bottom highlighted or circled. Can anyone tell me what that number is? You can put it in the chat. You don't have to worry about unmuting yourself, guys. Yes, thank you. It is 1,675. So if you hit the next slide, please. That's just showing data assistance, data per, sorry, homeless person assistance. 
So now we're actually going to be looking at the homeless street conditions since 2020. And as you guys know, homeless people have been put in hotels for to help lessen the spread of COVID. So again, we're going to do Bank Community Board. We're going to do date is created after January 1st, 2020. And for your descriptive type, you're going to put homeless street conditions. And again, can someone tell me what that number is that came up for the data set? And could you tell me what agency actually received the calls for them? You can find that in the fourth row. Yes, thank you so much. NYPD did respond to those calls and have been responding. So next slide. That's it. That's how you use the open data platform. I suggest playing around with it. There is a visualization tool that makes viewing the data extremely easy if you're not used to or feel overwhelmed by all the numbers that you're getting. How do we get our hands on the complete data? It depends on what data you actually want to see. Again, you can use the open data platform and narrow it to whatever you actually want to see, and then you can visualize it as you say you use to visualize the best spots in NYC for a fair. There is also, you can export the data. Would you like to see how to do that? You can export the data. We recommend using the uh, CSV file for it. It gives the best view for looking at the data. So there's actually a little bit more. So Sharon actually asked, how do you connect the data to the table? Joseph, can you actually go um, on to open data platform and just hit the visualization effect of it? Move your mouse to the right. Yeah, click the 311 service request. And as you can see, it gives you a visualization of the data, which graph you want to actually use it on. You can do pie charts, do histograms. So these data sets, James, these data sets are being updated daily. And from what we're seeing, some of the accuracy of them, they're pretty accurate, and some of them are not completed. It's never really completed. It's an ongoing, ever-uploading data set. And Sharon, if you want to get specific, there's different types of things you can do with it, like different types of measures. I suggest playing around and see what you actually like to use about this to see if it can answer any question you might have. All right. Anything else you guys want to see while we're doing the visualization demo? So Kiana, which did we see was the community board with the highest number of complaints and also and the borough with the most complaints would be interesting. So as Joseph is doing, you can look for community board and it, it goes by community boards and please watch out. There are some community boards that have the same number, but different boroughs. And you can also add a hierarchy and put also borough so it can specify like what type of borough you're looking for. What about borough overall? I'm just curious, like who's the most complaining borough? Oh, okay. So you can just do borough and take out community board. And yeah. Nice. Brooklyn. It seems like Brooklyn gets the most complaints, but you can actually look around and see what those exact complaints are from them. Like if it's noise residential, since Brooklyn and Queens are really like driveway areas, it, I feel like a lot of them would be block driveways. And I also really suggest uh, if you guys really want to understand the data a little bit more to actually export the data and put it into another sheet and see what let's take a couple questions just because we are getting close to the end i just want to address amy's question are category and keywords based on some structured vocabulary or ontology or not i'm not exactly sure what you mean by that zachary uh, maybe you do or maybe amy wants to explain a little bit yeah i'm happy to at least answer as i read the question and amy and then happy to also engage more but the general structure for searching on new york city open data is one, is something in the name of the data set or the description of the data set. And two, uh, I think it's what you're getting at, is these keywords that are associated with each data set. The guidance we give to city agencies as they're putting this data up is to generate keywords based on topics that they often use in association with the data set, acronyms that people might search for, but there is not some sort of structured vocabulary, I think, to your question. For the, the categories, there, there is a, a specific set of them. And, and those are, were just created to provide some less complexity. If you don't want to search through dozens and dozens of different agencies and have to figure out how those map different data sets, you could just look at it by these top little categories. Thanks, Amy. And then to James's question, the data integrity, completeness, and accuracy, Kiana started to talk about that, but of these 3,000 plus data sets, they go through a bit of a review process at every agency from which they come. So there's an open data coordinator at every agency who is responsible for doing the very best that they can to 
bring the mayor's office of data analytics and do it and accurate, just as you say, accurate, complete, and data with integrity. And uh, But data is data, right? So it's not going to be perfect no matter what. But um, we, we do, this city does a pretty damn good job with it. I, the disclaimer holding, of course, that data is always going to be a bit messy. And I'm sure, yeah. So that's just a, a little more into that question than, uh, yeah. But looks like Kiana wants to take it away a little bit more again here. But p- please feel free to keep asking questions in the chat. So we only have a few minutes left, or actually it's already almost three. What's left is just a few more slides. Do you want to teach this class? Do you, do you want to teach others this class? If so, then sign up to be part of a NYC Open Data Ambassador Program. So I'll mention a, a few of the resources and the resources that you can use. You can request a data set or ask a question to NYC Open Data at the site opendata.cityofnewyork.us slash engage. You can submit a radar research and data assistance request at beta NYC slash our products slash research and data assistance requests. And you can see what others have created or at opendata.cityofnewyork.us slash projects. There's also the site where you can, I think you can check your history of data driving violations. And this, I just fixed it, the NYC helps you deal with eviction or if you just want to look at things related to your, the choice relationship between social distancing and the width of sidewalks. Also, you can attend the Open Data Week Festival held every March, like right now, Open Data NYC. And this is, you can read the NYC Open Data 2020 report slash OTXMG. And this is a page of re- digital resources. You can access it at the link to the bottom left. But for now, that's all for the presentation. I hope you all have a really good day.